as people start joining, we can get started. Um, thank you all for joining us. Welcome to the second webinar of the Educational Technology or EdTech for All webinar series presented by the U.S. Department of Education, Office of Educational Technology, and Office of Special Education Programs. We are really excited to share with you about the digital writing tool Corgi, so let's get started. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Um, I know you're all incredibly busy and we're excited to share about Corgi from the perspectives of developers, educators, and a student who uses the tool. Please be aware that you can turn on the closed captioning features by finding the CC button on your screen. You should also be able to see an ASL interpreter on your screen. And lastly, you can share questions during the webinar by using the Q&A feature. Um, we will save the questions and answer the questions at the end of the webinar. Okay, so let's ground ourselves in why we are here. When we think about why we do these webinar seminars, uh, why, webinar series, we think about the users, the learners, and the educators. Their experiences and voices should always carry this work. So we're fortunate to share out voices from people who have used this tool, Corgi. So on the screen is a, co a quote from a middle school science teacher, which says the students can pull together their thoughts and show brilliance because they have an organizational tool that helps them to do so. And I love this quote. This next quote says, how often um, are all of the guides were simple to use and they really helped, helped me grasp the information. And that was from an eighth grade student. How often do you hear something like that? It's pretty exciting. And another quote is um, from a middle school science teacher. So can you imagine if they said things like this about all tech tools that they used with their students? I think that it's a good organizational tool that helps them organize their thoughts, a way for them to reflect on what they learn. And the fourth quote to share makes me wanna learn more because it's from a sixth grade student. It says, what I like about using Corgi is that everything is organized and put into different sections and that you can find things quickly. And with that in mind, that is why we are here today, to equip educators and school leaders with evidence-based ed tech tools to implement with these students who have or do not have disabilities with the goal of improving student outcomes. And we just have two terms that we want to define that is educational technology. We were using the term ed tech. That stands for any technology used for purpose of learning and the other term is accessibility. It is the design of apps, devices, materials, and environments that support and enable access to content and educational activities for all learners. Educational materials and technologies are accessible to people with disabilities if they are able to acquire the same information, engage in the same interactions, and enjoy the same services as people who do not have disabilities. Anita and I are excited to present on the behalf of the Department of Education. I am Ellery from the Office of Educational Technology, or OET. I am a white female with brown shoulder length curly hair. Um, previously, I was a middle and high school special education teacher for students with intellectual disabilities, as well as a parent advocate. Currently, I support OET projects on accessibility and OET's mission is to develop national ed tech policy and establish the vision for how technology can be used to transform teaching and learning and how to make everywhere all the time learning possible for early learners through K-12, higher ed, and adult education. And I'll pass it to Anita. And I'm Anita from the Office of Special Education Programs, and I'm a white female with long blonde hair, and I've spent most of my career working as a teacher, as a coach, technology specialist, and a district administrator. Currently, I support a lot of projects in this office, um, and we're dedicated to improving results with infants or for infants, toddlers, children, and youth with disabilities, ages birth through 21, and the Office of Special Education Programs directly and through its partners and its grantees develops a wide range of research-based products, publications, and resources to assist states local district personnel and families to improve results for students with disabilities. Now we will introduce the people who are we all here to learn from today. Um, panelists, please share your name, a visual description of yourself and your role as it relates to Corgi. 
I can call on people one by one. So we'll start first with Jamie. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. James Basham, otherwise known as Jamie, probably uh, most widely. Um, I'm a middle-aged man. Uh, my team wanted you, me to make sure I told you I was bald uh, with a graying beard. I'm a senior advisor at CAST and professor at the University of Kansas, and I happen to be the principal investigator of Corgi. Thank you so much. And next is Jenna. Hi, everybody. My name is Jenna Gravel. I'm a white woman with brown hair. I'm a senior researcher at CAST, and CAST is a nonprofit education research organization. And I am the co-PI of our Corgi project, and we are really excited to be here and to share Corgi with you today. Thank you. And next is Anne-Marie. Hi, I'm Anne-Marie Kenoki. Um, I am a white female um, with curly brown hair, and I wear glasses. I'm a research associate at CAST, um, and my role on the Corgi project is I'm the project manager. Um, and like Jenna, I'm super excited to be able to share our tool with you today. Thank you. And next is Sung. Hi, everyone. I'm Sung Park. I'm an Asian male wearing a light blue shirt, complemented by a light gray sports jacket. And I work in the Santa Clara County Office of Education as coordinator of inclusion education and technical support. I provide uh, professional learning, coaching, and technical support for uh, best practices in inclusion education. And I help support Corgi uh, within its use in schools in Santa Clara County here in California, and the San Francisco Bay Area, and also provide some design feedback in its use within inclusive learning environments. Thank you. Uh, next up, Melissa. Hi, I'm uh, Melissa McCallahan. I am a white, brown-haired female. I am a science teacher in the middle school, and I am a Corgi user. Thank you. And last but not least, Sophie. Hi, I'm Sophie Yeager. I'm a student, and I have blonde hair. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, now we'll ask the audience to introduce yourselves. Um, a poll should pop up on your screen. Please select what your primary role is. It's great to get to know who is joining us in the virtual room and we can keep it open for like 30 seconds or so. And it is, what is your primary role and options include general educator, special educator, or related service provider, school-based coach or specialist, district level coach or specialist, technology specialist, administrator, researcher, parent or caregiver, or other. And it looks like the focus is around technology specialists, administrators, parents and caregivers and others. So thank you for joining us. So we're excited to have you all here to, uh, with us today and to hear from the panel. And wanted to let you know, we do have a question and answer feature in the chat. If um, the audience has some questions, feel free to ask. But in the meantime, I would like to start with asking a question um, of Jamie, and um, it's about the Corgi. So tell us about your tool and why you decided to make this tool. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for the Office of Special Education Programs for giving us an opportunity to actually make the tool through a, through a grant because these grants really provide us the resources needed to conduct the research to develop effective and accessible tools. And obviously we wanna also thank the Office of uh, Educational Technology for supporting us here today in getting the word out about Corey because um, the tool is only as good as the users. So um, Corky has actually been under development for about a decade through multiple grants. And we've shown, we have shown some success in working with both high schoolers and middle school schoolers. The current grant, we're really focused on middle school students. Um, but what Corgi does is it takes graphic organizers, 
which have been shown over decades to be tried and true resources of, of teachers and students to help organize information, to or, organize the thought process, to organize writing, um, and to bring higher order skills and great habits of mind to the learning process. And so what we've tried to do is take these graphic organizers and put them in a simple to use and easy form for supporting learning. Um, and one of the things that has been noted is that graphic organizers over the years have been done on paper, right? Um, and while paper is great and some of us like drawing things out, what we found in, in, in the paper-based world is that it didn't really translate well, especially from an accessibility stance, right? So by and large, access, uh, paper is not overly accessible, especially for individuals with some disabilities. And so Corgi helps support greater accessibility for all learners. It also allows for students in digital environments in these more modern environments to engage in the learning process more readily. So as their teacher is showing a video, they can link directly to a video and they can talk about that video within Corgi itself. And so we made the tool as a simple to use uh, tool for the modern learning environment. And that's why we wanted to focus on it because we saw the world changing and we wanted to make sure it was uh, with the students and the teachers have the tools to be able to change with it. Thank you. So, um, so I was thinking that's really great to think about how useful this tool is. So can you tell us a little bit more about how you would use it with the students and when do you use the tool or when would students use this tool? And also what features are considered to be the most useful? Oh my gosh. So I think we're gonna show you a little bit of the tool while I'm talking. Uh, so it's kind of exciting. Uh, Corgi is a free to use tool. Um, it's available on the web. Uh, people use it actually all over the United States and the world on a daily basis. Um, and it has a lot of great features and it's used multiple ways. Uh, our research is specifically focused on STEM, on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, but it's also used in social studies and any other sort of content area level of teaching. It's a simple to use tool, and we provide uh, on, on the website, corgi.cast.org, uh, a various resources for learning about the tool. Just if you come to the homepage, you can kind of learn about it on your own. And like I said earlier, our focus was to make it simple and easy to use. And this was especially helpful during the pandemic when many kids and teachers were at home. And we wanted to create a tool that didn't, didn't take a lot of uh, professional learning for teachers. And it didn't take a lot of um, support by teachers in working with the students that parents could actually work with the students. And so we wanted to create a tool and a website that allowed for that. And so that's what we tried to do here. But you can quickly just sign in to Corgi, as Anne Marie is going to do right here. And as soon as you sign in, you're, 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 you go to your Corgi homepage. And you quickly see in the Corgi homepage that there are, right now, there are four guides that can be used. Um, and you see the, the four types of guides. We have a cause and effect guide. We have a question exploration guide, a comparison guide, a claim and evidence reasoning guide. And then the other thing you saw right when she logged in is some of the guides that she's been working on, right? Uh, we also have a, a lesson library and a how to use Corgi, and it's right there. Uh, the other things you'll see just really quickly before she jumps into this, up at the very top, we have built-in accessibility features because we have built in, and we're going to talk a little about a little bit later, built in universal design for learning into the into the design of the guide of Corgi itself. So, but what we can quickly do here is just look at one what one of these looks like. So teachers use this in a variety of ways. The guides are built into multi-step sort of routines to help guide the information and thinking that goes into uh, the learning process. Um, and so right here, we're looking at a comparison guide where we're going to be comparing uh, solar and lunar eclipses. And it's broken down, starting with an essential question. And you see very quickly on this page, it's already completed uh, here uh, because we're using a guide that's been completed. But you'll see here very quickly that it starts off an essential question. Now, 
Uh, the student can ask the question themselves in an inquiry-based way, or the teacher can present the students with the question um, and provide them examples. But what's important is off to the left, you also see instructions. The teacher can lay in instructions, can provide um, videos for the students, and they can provide the instructions in multiple sort of ways. So text mess, they could text the students, they can add a video for the students. So they could provide explicit instruction as needed, or they could kind of do a more of an inquiry-based sort of way. The other thing that you'll see here is we're looking at Corgi and into one of the guides is you see that there's uh, the overall organizer that is kind of, again, we're showing a completed organizer. So you can see how the information kind of comes together as the students are completing this. And teachers use this in a way where they can they can do a gradual release where it's an I do, we do, you do sort of, sort of situation, or they can do it. We've seen it in guided notes. We've seen it We've seen it used in a variety of different ways and have, have shown success in these variety of ways. The other thing is, is you can both hide and expand the organizer. Then as the students go through and they're answering the essential question, filling out the necessary information, going through the different steps, they kind of get through the steps, they can import videos, text, different sorts of media, they can translate it, they can look up terms, they can do everything they need to do. And then they get to the very end and the teacher says, okay, we're gonna, I want you to submit this to me. Oh, but wait a minute. It helps with executive functioning because it gives them a reminder. Hey, you forgot to do step four. Uh, we purposely forgot to do step four. So you can go back and you can say, oh my gosh, I forgot to do uh, defining their overall concept. And so you can quickly go through and define their overall concept. Uh, and Emory's very fast at doing that. <laughs> so um, you get to the very end and then the teacher says, okay, I want you to, you can share this back with me. So Corgi connects to Google Classroom, but it can connect to any LMS system, but you can post it in the Google Classroom. You can print a PDF. You could share the guide back with a teacher or a parent. But the feature that we see the most use of is creating a slide presentation. So it automatically takes your content and builds a slide presentation because we know a lot of middle school students present their slides to their class. And so it took all the information in the graphic organizer, created a slide presentation that is editable uh, by an individual student, by a group of students, or by in collaboration between a teacher and a student. And so they can go in and add content and um, and kind of hone the topic a little bit more. So, Anita, we see um, we see this being used in a variety of different ways. Like I said, we see it being used as a tool that teachers are using uh, for students to learn the concepts and to think through the concepts. We see it used oftentimes as a, a guided note sort of structure. We see it as a collaborative group sort of structure where students are working in groups. And we see it uh, where students are kind of working on their own individually to learn to learn different concepts. It is really exciting. I really um, can't believe it. And it's free. And it's so freely available. That is um, amazing how many and, options there are. Um, I know we're going to get into it. And again, it's freely available because we've received grants to make that happen. So we're able through the Office of Special Education Programs and the U.S. Department of Education overall to be able to provide this for people to use and teachers to use and have such a high quality product that we're continually doing research on to make sure and improve it uh, because we have the, the funding to do that sort of work. And we are very appreciative of that. Well, it, that's great. We're, um, we're glad to, you know, fun, fun projects that are going to be well used, right, by students and stuff and right. um, have an impact, which is actually leads me to some of the next question is I was wondering if we have Melissa on the call as an educator, and I would love to hear from her to tell a story of how a student has used this tool and how did that impact them? Um, sure. Um, so, in last year's class, um, when we were fully back from the pandemic and quarantine and stuff, um, I my students write a lot of essays. And so I um, had been playing around with the Corgi tool and 
um, students were doing a comparison essay and a few of them were really struggling with the idea of how to take what they knew and put it into some kind of organization so that it was a good comparison and contrast. And so I was like, hey, I know what we can do. And so we all learned about Corgi and a couple of students really grabbed hold of it and used it to um, create what I think was a far better um, a comparison essay than had they done it on their own. Sophie is um, the one who really championed it and uh, several other students in the room started using it more and more. And so that idea of, um, and she's gonna say this too, where you, where all these thoughts, everything you've researched is in your head and or on a piece of paper, but is in any kind of organized way. And so over time, they found that the graphic organizers that were provided and then others that they created on their own were useful tools to um, bring the thoughts together and then could write an actual, could write an essay. They went from slideshow to essay, but they had both. So when they presented, they were very knowledgeable that it was much more in depth and uh, really strengthen their writing skills and research skills. That's great. It sounds like um, the Corgi really helped the students. And so I, I actually would love to ask the next question then, since you have Sophie with you from her perspective, you know, tell us about how your experience of using Corgi and how did it help you? Um, I like Corgi because when I was writing, um, sometimes when I especially like compare and contrast, um, I would like will know what I'm trying to say, but I wouldn't know how to write it on the paper or how to like structure it. So Corgi like really helped me structure my ideas and like get the thoughts from my head onto the paper and actually write it down and it was really organized and easy to use. So you would um, you found it really helpful to use to get all your ideas out of your head onto the computer, basically, which yeah, other than a paper. And do you recommend it to your friends as well? Yeah, definitely, because especially when you're writing and you have like these great ideas and you just don't know how to like you'll know how to compare, but you don't really know how to do it. It definitely helps you do it way more and. It's definitely really good. <laughs> do you think, it, I just have one other quick question is, do you think it would be easy um, to teach your friends how to do it? Yeah, really, it goes step by step. She did. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, wait a minute, how did you get it to do that? And she's like, well, da, 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 da. <laughs> so she, she kind of took it and ran with it. I didn't know, I no longer had to show anybody how to do anything. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, thank you for sharing, Sophie. I'm sure we're going to have a lot more people after hearing from you and watching, um, you know, the great description of the tool, wanting to to learn more. Um, we'll know they'll know who to go to. <laughs> uh, so, my uh, next question is actually I'm going to turn it over to Ellery to ask the next question. Yeah. Um, thank you both so much, Sophie and Melissa. It's really incredible to hear the impact and learn from how to use this tool. Um, from you at being a user and, and seeing how you, you know be able to have your confidence grow. Um, so to learn about this impact from another perspective, Sung, how did this tool support learners with disabilities and English language learners? Corky provides an invaluable tool for supporting students uh, with disabilities and English learners by adopting the principles of universal design for learning. Um, universal design for learning, UDL, it promotes a uh, framework and a creation of educational learning environments that encourages flexibility and accessibility. Uh, we challenge ourselves to cater to all learners, including um, those with diverse needs. Uh, variability is a norm and we want to account for that. So we use the UDL framework to guide the design of Corgi and how it's used in learning environments so that it's accessible and challenging for all. And under this approach, um, we, Corgi allows for multiple means of engagement. A lot of it has already been shown and uh, they transfer uh, students 
the choice to their understanding to tailor their learning activities based on their uh, interests, their backgrounds, and we try to give them that flexibility to support their self-regulation, their executive functioning. And in that way, uh, Corgi supports the systematic organization and presentation of information and ideas. And it helps uh, scaffold that learning. It helps to organize it and to uh, represent and engage and act in different ways uh, to uh, not only start that learning process, but to continue to regulate and persist in learning. And Corgi further aligns with um, the UDL principle of uh, providing multiple means of representation. And what this means is that uh, we're providing multiple ways to show and represent ideas. Uh, and we saw a, a bit of that uh, with Amory showing how text can be put in. And along with that, we could put in audio, we can put in visuals, multimedia, and other graphical organizations of concepts. And we can do it in a variety of ways. And this flexibility supports learners to understand and process uh, the information that best suits their context. And we saw a little bit about uh, providing multiple means of action and expression through not only the way students could um, add in their uh, understanding, but also the way it's outputted in slide format so that they can uh, have the basis for presentations and so forth. So in this way, students are able to express their understanding and knowledge through various um, ways uh, with the text, the speech, the visuals, the multimedia, the slides. We have all the accessibility tools built in, such as you know, text-to-speech, speech-to-text. Uh, and these diverse means of expression are providing multiple ways, multiple pathways for students so that it is uh, accessible, engaging, and challenging for students. So we just want to stress again, the flexibility, the accessibility, the engagement pathways, uh, they can be adopted in many ways. Uh, we can change the scope and sequence. We can change the way uh, they're presented uh, so that it's flexible and suitable for a wide range of learners. And while providing that flexibility for students, we provide that flexibility for teachers also to structure the instruction and the material, the method, so that they can also provide timely and targeted focus support and assist students in the development of ideas on organization. These all promote inclusive teaching practices and it enhances everyone's awareness and responsiveness so that the pacing, group work, um, everything is made to be uh, suitable for each learner. And Corgi and digital graphic organizers are universal supports uh, for organizing information and ideas, uh, supports for everybody to use. Um, and I guess uh, I spoke a lot on supporting students with uh, disabilities. And if we think about it, supporting students with uh, English uh, or English learners, uh, students, I should say. Uh, that's a big uh, concern in Santa Clara County because uh, English learners comprise 23% of our students and another 30% are fluent English proficient, meaning that over half the students in our county have a primary language other than English. And we're always looking for our tools to support our English learners. And Corby is terrific in that way because it provides substantial assistance to English learner students. All the supports, all the uh, universal uh, elements that help uh, students with disabilities can also support English learners. Uh, I want to call out that uh, uh, specifically for English learner students, uh, there's bilingual supports, there's vocabulary supports. Right now, Corby offers support in Spanish, uh, assisting comprehension for students who are new to English and in the process of learning it. Uh, English vocabulary uh, tools are built in, uh, they're structured, they're visual, you can also hear it. There's also that multiple means of um, providing that representation and that comprehension of English. 
Uh, and in addition to this, uh, we can embed culturally responsive and relevant uh, means of the engagement and representation because there is that flexibility in Corgi and the graphical organization of all these ideas. We can really uh, promote this cultural responsive and relevant and sustaining elements of it by bringing in elements from uh, students' diverse cultural backgrounds that are authentic to them and their learning experience. Uh, so we're always looking for ways to uh, make it that much more enhancing to the learning uh, material. We also want to really highlight the uh, potential to facilitate collaborative learning. Um, English learners could have meaningful learning and communication uh, with English proficient uh, peers, and it provides a real a uh, great collaborative way to go about these shared learning experiences. And it Corgi builds upon all the collaborative uh, real-time uh, supports and working tools within the Google uh, Apps environment. So these tools align well uh, in these inclusive environments. They also provide ongoing formative assessment and feedback because of the collaborative synchronous nature of um, the tool being built within Google Apps. Uh, we can see uh, what students are, what learners are uh, putting in, what learning learners are engaging with within Corgi. And in that way, uh, teachers can provide real-time feedback to students' work and guide them uh, towards uh, you know, better understanding and improvement. So teachers are able to monitor uh, progress and assess uh, English learners' understanding and adapt instruction accordingly. So Corgi and digital graphic organizers uh, you know, designed with UDL principles working within the UDL framework, we really uh, try, we really work hard to offer comprehensive, flexible, and inclusive learning supports um, to help all students. Thank you so much for that incredible overview of how um, Corgi supports students uh, who have various learning needs and various backgrounds. Um, to get a little bit more specific into your experiences, Song, how does Corgi support STEM learning in your county? Well, STEM is important everywhere, and especially um, here in Santa Clara County. I mean, we are uh, the, the, the county of Silicon Valley. And uh, with it, though, we have incredible diversity. We've uh, got incredible variability of our students at anything, again, that helps to understand, to learn uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, um, any of those uh, in a more uh, engaging way is a critical need and Corgi is something that does do that. Corgi, for instance, it facilitates the organization and representation of information and it makes it significantly easier for uh, learners, students to understand and retain complex STEM concepts. And by understanding and retaining these complex STEM concepts and being able to organize and just uh, uh, provide ways of thinking about these concepts, it encourages them to build off of those foundations and develop higher order thinking skills. Uh, the, the organization tools built within Corgi, they help understand cross-cutting concepts and problem-solving skills uh, that are uh, inherent and uh, very important within uh, STEM learning. So students can identify patterns, organize ideas, analyze data, uh, which are essential abilities uh, within STEM. And students are able to discern relationships, draw conclusions, make informed decisions. So uh, Corgi not only simplifies complex STEM concepts into smaller, more manageable parts, uh, by breaking down complex concepts or processes into smaller constituent elements, um, students can build upon that and also structure their understanding to better comprehend and remember these concepts. I mean, um, I use these tools all the time too, and, and we want to be able to uh, have all, everybody understand uh, these concepts and have these tools to organize their thinking. And in this way, it helps to chunk information, um, which is uh, you know, well-documented in helping learning and so effective strategy in enhancing memory and understanding. Uh, it helps students to visualize connections between different concepts and processes. I mean, um, 
we can highlight cause and effect relationships or other cross-cutting uh, concepts of relationships, facilitate uh, exploration of these questions, and just really uh, continue to dig into some of these um, uh, content areas. So it's all about starting from a foundation and providing more options and engagement, representation, action, expression, and from there really being able to provide an environment where deeper understanding and more meaningful uh, questions and engagement within STEM topics can be provided. Uh, so along with that, uh, learners, students are able to uh, be supported in the planning and organiz organizing of work. We saw uh, an example shown that it's really laid out the steps to take in terms of uh, diving into a um, area. And in that way, it helps to really facilitate not only learning, but how, about how we go about that process and that work or a project or a task or a study plan in a visually organized way. Uh, also, with the collaboration tools built in, um, that's within the Google uh, app environment, it facilitates collabor the communication skills that go with it. So we saw how it helps with the slides uh, and having a presentation uh, based on those slides. But uh, in the learning process, we can embed communication, we can embed comments, and just uh, uh, communication within the Corgi tool. So it's helping facilitate uh, communication skills, uh, which is an essential part of the STEM learning experience. Uh, so in all these ways, it, it, it helps us to promote academic success in STEM disciplines and um, uh, support uh, all students in their learning uh, within STEM disciplines. Thank you so much, Sung, and giving kind of us a closer look at your experiences and how it can support students in STEM. Um, shifting to um, Melissa, as an educator, we know educators have so much going on and starting something can be really overwhelming. So what advice do you have for other educators? And what would you say to an educator who is interested but does not know where to start or is just to start using the tool? Sure. Um, I did introduce this to a couple of my fellow colleagues here at our school. And what I told them to do was um, to take a really good look at the option, to look at the site, to look at what's available and to try it out for themselves. And then I, I said, you're going to want to go um, to the helpful tools. I know that um, Jenna and Anne Marie and the whole team has worked really hard to make cheat sheets and videos and um, really there's a lot of really handy tools for helping you understand how it all works and how to use it with your students. Um, and they're also very receptive if you contact them with questions. So that's another way to go. Um, but it really is an easy tool to use. And um, with the cheat sheet and the, the few videos, you'll be um, rocking it out. Plus kids like Sophie get it really quickly. <laughs> so they are helpful too. They'll, as Sophie actually said to me before, did you know that this button does this? And I was like, nope, haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> so I, you know, I just, I think you have to try it yourself and um, see where you fall into not understanding what's happening and then go to the tools that are available to teach you how to use them and watch a video or whatever works best for you and then try it again. And uh, that's, that's how I figured it out. And uh, it, it's been really a successful opportunity for me and my community. Thank you, that's great to hear and I'm sure a lot of educators have similar experiences of students being able to help out in some of the tech. Um, and I hope educators can, you know, take some time to explore the website. Um, but we also have here Jenna and Anne-Marie um, to kind of share about what supports there are available for educators to learn more about the tool and how to get started and, and where should they start because that's already built into the tool itself. Yeah, so we are really excited about all that Corgi has to offer, and we want to be sure that educators feel really confident and supported in getting started with Corgi. So from the very beginning of the project, we've been committed to a co-design approach where we've been collaborating with educators and students to learn from their perspectives regarding different aspects of the design of Corgi. 
And this has been true for the professional learning supports that we've been developing as well. We've been so grateful to work with teachers like Melissa, who have shared their ideas for different resources we could create to help them get started using the tool, and also different resources we could create to help them use Corgi in ways that really align with the unique context of their own classrooms and that align with the unique learning goals that they're engaging their students with. So based on teacher's feedback, and especially based on Melissa's feedback, we know she was a big fan of video, so we focused on that. Um, we've created a how to use Corgi page as well as a lesson library, and those resources are embedded right within the Corgi tool. And I will hand it off to Anne Marie and she will be able to give you a little tour of those different resources. Hi, so just like Melissa said, um, we did create, um, so this slide is a, we have a screenshot of our resource page, which is the first place that we always recommend that users go to when they want to learn and visit about Corgi, just go here first. Um, we currently have two sections that are, you can see on the screenshot. The first is how to use Corgi. And the second piece is our professional learning series, which is basically how you use Corgi in your classroom. Um, and we've we work with teachers, we got their feedback. And so we tried to think about the essential documents that would be needed or videos or um, Google Slides. So the first section on how to use Corgi, we provide step-by-step -step instruction on how to authorize Corgi onto your Google account, how to share a Corgi guide, um, how to use it in your Google Classroom. These are kind of more the technical things of how you use Corgi um, to get on. And so again, we tried to make them as simple as possible. Um, understanding that teachers are extremely busy um, and have limited time. So all of our resources are, resources are very concise and, and to the point and not longer than five minutes. Um, the second section here is how to use Corgi in your classroom. So these research, resources will help teachers understand how Corgi can support quality instruction. Um, we've also provided some tips for teachers and how best to use Corgi. Um, and we provided some examples of like, how would you use this in your classroom? Would you want to use it with individual kids or partners and teamwork or however? So we provided some guidance on that for teachers. So these the professional learning are more of guidance and how you can use Corgi in your classroom. Um, in addition to this page, we also created a lesson library for teachers. Um, we have provided some sample units that are connected to NGSS that cover physical science, earth science, and life science. These units are encompassing of, of, of every option, but not examples of all options. Um, teachers can use the units or parts, parts of them or customize them, however, um, to according to their unique goals and context. So um, this the, the lesson library lives on the main page, um, and so you can click on those. Um, and these units, we provide goals for teachers. We provide resources that they can use, um, universal design. Um, for learning suggestions to think about when you're teaching certain content. And then we, of course, we've have completed Corgi guides. So if you want to see what a finished and a, a completed guide looks like, and we have it linked to the content, you can see those. So um, I will, um, oh, it looks like Jenna already put in the chat an example of our Earth's place in the universe. And so this is one of our units that has a number of lessons. And so you can go in there and view and see um, what it looks like. So I'm going to pass it back to Jenna. Um, to go and go in more in depth on some of our resources. Yeah, we wanted to focus in on two of these resources to offer examples of the variety of formats and the variety of supports that we offer to teachers. So the first example we wanted to share with you today is Corgi Tips for Teachers. And the image on this slide is the first page of the document. And we'll put that document in the chat just in case you want to explore it for yourself. And this resource is designed as an accessible Google Doc, and it offers just a bunch of tips to teachers, such as leveraging the flexibility of the tool according to students' different preferences, supporting students to develop discipline-specific practices and habits of mind using the different Corgi guides, and harnessing Corgi's collaboration features to support students to work together in real time. So just really kind of highlighting to teachers different ways to use some of the, the features within Corgi. And the resource also shares how Corgi can be leveraged to really support a cycle of reflective learning among 
both teachers and students. So we're finding that teachers can use students' Corgi guides, the completed guides, or even partially completed guides as kind of a really important source of formative assessment in order to inform the design of future lessons. Then teachers and students can work together to use the guides to identify different areas of growth. And then students can use the guides independently as a tool for self-reflection to kind of go back. And when Jamie and Anne-Marie were giving that tour of our one feature where there's kind of like that self check built right into the Corgi guides. That's a great tool to really support students to be thinking about places where they might want to go back and more fully describe something that they're learning or to double check something. So it's been really interesting to work with teachers and students to kind of uncover how Corgi can be used to support reflection in lots of different ways. And then the second resource that we wanted to share with you is our Corgi Plus UDL resource. And this resource is designed as an accessible Google slideshow. And as Sung mentioned, we use the framework of universal design for learning to guide the design of Corgi in order to make sure that we were creating an accessible and an inclusive digital learning environment. So this resource that we created gives examples of the embedded features that align with each of the three principles of UDL, provide multiple means of engagement, provide multiple means of representation, and provide multiple means of action and expression. So the image on this slide is a page within this Corgi Plus UDL resource. And we again will put the link to this resource right in the chat if you want to explore it for yourself. And this page on the screen now is showing a page within the Corgi guide and it's highlighting in the top right corner where the real-time collaboration feature is. And it's making really explicit how this collaboration feature aligns with the UDL principle of provide multiple means of engagement. So the slide reads, real-time collaboration. Corgi's collaboration features offer students opportunities to share ideas and learn from one another. And then it provides a link to the specific UDL checkpoint that aligns with this feature. So in this case, it's the UDL checkpoint foster collaboration and community. So this is just one example. As Sung mentioned, we as a team have been really intentional in the design of Corgi and making sure that we're really leveraging UDL to just offer a range of different UDL features. So this resource kind of goes through each of those features and really kind of showcases the way we've leveraged UDL in the design of Corgi and also kind of providing those direct links to more information about specific UDL guidelines and checkpoints can be a way to kind of support educators to make connections between the design of Corgi and um, kind of that foundation of UDL that we've used for it. So as we're wrapping up this section of the webinar, we just hope that this little introduction to Corgi has really inspired you to try it out for yourselves. A reminder, as Jamie mentioned, this is a free tool. So we are just thrilled to be able to share it with you. We'll put the link again in the chat. It's corgi.cast.org. So we really encourage you to try it out for yourselves and to start imagining how you might be able to use Corgi in your own context. And we also have to say that we are always eager to be collaborating with teachers. So if you are a teacher out there and you are curious about trying Corgi out with your students, please reach out to us. You can email us at corgi at cast.org. And we would just be th so thrilled to work with you. So we really encourage you if you've got any questions or you're curious about ways that you might be able to partner with us, please reach out. Thank you so much, Jenna and Anne-Marie. That seems like a really great opportunity to be able to use a free tool and then also be able to um, work with you all and, and see what work can be done together. And I think, um, you know, those of you that may be watching this on a recorded uh, video, we'll make sure we have these links in the description of the of the video, because as we said, it'll be posted on YouTube and some other places. So a lot of these links, um, like such as the corgi.cast.org email and things like that will be available for you. 
so I do invite you to submit any questions and answer or questions you have in the Q&A section uh, on the Zoom. And you can always ask us afterwards also if you're watching a recording. But we do have some questions in the chat. Uh, actually, I was thinking the first one that was a quickly, it was answered, but J Jamie, did you want to answer out loud the one that you typed in? Um, there was a question about using Google uh, and what requirements were needed for Google, like if you had to have a school account or if it could be a sure. personal account. Sure. Uh, so I, and I tried to answer it online, but uh, for people that didn't get to, aren't able to see the Q&A because they're watching it later, the question said, uh, do you have to uh, have Google to use Corgi? And basically then ask, so do you need to have a school account or a nonprofit account or can it be a personal Google account? Um, so we, Corgi works with any uh, learning management system or LMS, but it is built on the Google app platform. So it does require a Google login. You can use whatever uh, account you feel is appropriate for your use. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, we sometimes have parents using it that are using their personal accounts. We've even had teachers use their personal accounts. But if your school is a Google uh, facing school, it does easily integrate into Google Classroom and uh, but generally uses any sort of Google account and will work within an LMS system. Thank you. I actually have uh, there's a couple of other questions and one of them is about a parent. But first, um, a question for Melissa. It's, I'll read how it's written. Uh, we know graphic organizers help students in a variety of ways. So as a teacher, what have you found to be the most effective way to introduce Corgi to students? And how have you seen their work and engagement change as you your students are using this tool? Um, so I have introduced it two different ways with two different sets of students. I did a whole class instruction with, um, Jenna and Anne-Marie, which was really fun for them and several teachers in my school attended. Um, and then uh, they then they started working in partners with it because um, you have that option. You can do a whole class, you can do partners, you can do small groups. Um, and then a few, a, a few of the students, I have a small class, I'm in a small school. A few of the students picked it up and ran with it on their own. I have also, shown one or two students and then they have told everyone else and everyone's using it in the room. So either way has worked really well. Um, yeah, they, either way has worked really well. The students of course have grabbed hold of it and then we've had small, we've had meetings where it's been like, okay, I see that you're using this, but you did not recognize that you need, you could use this tool or this tool. So we come back and readdress what tools are available to them. Um, and sometimes I work with small groups, one, you know, just the smaller groups and go over when they have questions and we talk over where they're struggling and where they've seen successes. Hope that's helpful. Also, Sophie, the question about Sophie, I'm sorry, I'm stepping on you, but um, Sophie's not here, but I do know the answer to the question. Um, she got antsy and so I sent her on her way. It is after school. So. <laughs> So yeah, that's actually great because that was another question I was going to ask a little bit more about. It was in the chat, but you know, what other ways has Sophie or other students used used it? So you began to say how they use it in a variety of ways. What about different subject areas? Um, so they've used it in um, writing to organize their thoughts and do essays that way, just in the actual writing class. We do exhibitions, which require quite a bit of research, or um, also that's for science and math and social studies in um, and language arts, those are all tied together. And right now she's using it to compare and contrast two books for her literature exhibition. Um, so she's using it to organize her thoughts on how she wants to write the essay and use the presentation as a part of her 10 minute verbal part of her exhibition. Um, she's not really used it too much in math, she said, but, um, she does use it when she needs a graphic organizer to prep for test. She used it once for a science test that we did. She threw all the information that she had into um, one of the organizers and made a slideshow almost like flashcards for herself. Um, and I've seen a couple other students learn that from her and use it as well. Interesting. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the ability of being able to take the information and change it into a PowerPoint, which 
you know, we know flash card, PowerPoints can be like six pages on or slides on a page when you go mm -hmm. in. So it's, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll come back to you with another question in a minute, but I have a, a question first for uh, maybe more as the developers um, and, and Jamie. Um, the question is more about thinking about, so Melissa talked about how she uses this with a small setting. What about using this with a variety of different settings? Uh, you know, I know Sun was talking a little bit about his district. So I was just curious hearing from other people on the panel, what are some of the different various settings that you have found this tool to be successful with as far as, um, people who might be interested in joining and signing up. Yeah, sure. You know, it's kind of interesting because I said earlier, we conducted earlier research uh, in a high school setting and we found it to be extremely useful in a high school setting and showing significant gains in both social studies and in science uh, STEM-based learning for students with disabilities in, in high school settings. So we know that it's there's shown effectiveness there. Obviously we're doing the work right now in middle school settings. Uh, but from, you know, the Twitterverse and everything that we've heard and, and people that have reached out to us, we've actually even have seen it being used in um, community, community colleges and university settings uh, that people are using it to help organize their thoughts and kind of uh, support their writing process and understanding in those areas. So I think that's that's critically important. Um, I, and there's a parent question here. I know we're going to get to that, but I think this kind of aligns to that as well, because as we're going into the summer season, I know a lot of parents are thinking, what can they do with their students uh, throughout the summer and their kids? Um, I think it's important for parents to be able to have access to tools like this that are being used in schools to help support extended learning for, for their own kids. Um, and so, uh, you know, as students are reading books in the summer or parents are trying to communicate concepts in the summer, uh, Corgi can be used in that sort of way as well. We know that parents did collaborate with students in the learning process throughout the pandemic. I will tell a little bit of a story on my own kids. Uh, one of the things we do here is if my kids get in trouble or when they were younger, they're much older now, uh, we used to have to have them, if they're grounded or something like that, they would have to present a reason as to why they should be ungrounded. <laughs> so they would present to us the, you know, what their lessons learned were. And I can very easily see where having them compare uh, different concepts around things or, or uh, going through the corgi process to help that thinking process, especially for adolescent sort of mindsets. Sometimes they need sort of structured thinking if anyone has teenage kids at home. Uh, and so this kind of could help with that, I would think. That's persuasive writing at its finest. <laughs> yes, exactly. And so thinking about the parent setting, that actually brings me back to thinking a, a follow-up question with Melissa around the parent. So like in the chat, somebody had talked about what ways parent uh, this could be used at home. And so it's great to hear Jamie's examples. And I'm wondering if how Melissa may have or suggestions she has for parents that might either watch this or teachers that want to encourage parents, you know, more use at home. So the beauty of being able to put it into your Google Classroom, for me, because we are we use Google here, is that um, uh, it's really it, it interfaces really easily together. So most of the homework is done through the Google Classroom. Um, so once I know that they are comfortable with what they're using, then they can use it to um, do their research and, in science or in their essay, and then. Um, they turn it in so that I can see uh, support what they've written in their essay. So that's how I've used that. Um, also, I have used all of the lesson library that is there <laughs> and then um, used some of the UDL and, and uh, different tools as study guides within my, um, my classroom for them to refer to. Um, so if you're doing any kind of like homeschooling, uh, the lesson library is brilliant and well presented and full of media and factual information that um, student that they just need to know to meet the standards. They've done that work for you. Why go do it again? And it would have taken me hours to pull together what hours, days, let's be honest, days to pull together what they put into their lesson library. And so um, that I would just recommend both using the 
the organizers and then also, you know, using the lesson library to um, inform and help your student um, be prepared for whatever testing they have to hear in the East Coast. We test to go in high schools. It's a great way to practice for your testing to get into the high school, you know. Forgot I had left myself muted. That happens in every webinar, right? Um, I, I think it's great to hear how you are really encouraging the use in a variety of ways, even outside the classroom to extend learning. And we had a comment in the chat about the example of um, using it with colleges or you know um, uh, higher education, because especially universities with disability services, uh, you know, may want to provide ways to give students and children opportunities to express their ideas and self-advocate. So, um, you know, if you have any ideas, Melissa, we would love to hear the best way to, to get this word out more, right? If we have such a great tech tool that is, is, is so useful, um, you know, we, yeah. Any last words about how to uh, spread the, the, the knowledge of a tool that you find so useful and um, impactful? <laughs> Um, I've been to a few conferences, and I would have to say that the South by Southwest Education Conference would be a fantastic place to do that. Um, and, um, you know, the Twitterverse, and uh, there's Edutopia, and there's quite a few things on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter that um, could highlight the brilliance of it. I mean, if they want to call me, I will gladly tell them all about it. But, you know, so would Jenna and all the others. So. <laughs> It has been a game changer for a lot of my kids. What you don't know about Sophie is she couldn't, she couldn't even compare cats and dogs. And this, and now she compares two different books with brilliance and articulation that she never had before. And I 100% attribute to her ability, the use of Corgi. So yeah. just say <laughs> Thank you so much. That is so, it sounds wonderful. And it, I know we could probably talk all day when we find something exciting. So, but I think we want to close out the webinar for, for today and please make sure people check the links and the chat and, you know, or in the description of this recording. So you can get on the website and start using Corby. Yeah, I think that's a perfect way to end the webinar. Um, and we'll be putting these links in the chat as well as um, all the links we've been sharing on the YouTube description. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed learning about a great tool you can incorporate into your classroom and or into your home. Um, you'll be able to find a recording of this webinar um, next week on the Office of EdTech's website, um, OSEP's website, and um, Corgi's website. Um, we will have future webinars this um, spring and summer with um, other EdTech tools. Um, and lastly, um, there's a few resources from OET. Um, we have our quarterly newsletter, the, our blog where we share out, um, you know, most recently was some accessibility resources to use in classrooms. Um, we have an affordable connectivity program toolkit and um, ACP provides a discount of up to $30 per month towards internet service for eligible households and up to $75 per month for households on qualifying tribal lands. Um, and there's a lot of money not being used. So if you know of any families, um, if they receive free and reduced lunches, then they should qualify. Um, and this is a great opportunity. Um, and lastly, there's the department's digital accessibility video series, which has brief videos on how to get started in digital accessibility. Um, and I know some state departments have used it for teacher training. And I'll pass it to Anita. Yes, thank you. So uh, we have like, again, we'll put the links in the chat, but we have the one main website that is osepideasthatwork.org, which usually um, has, you can find a lot of, you heard Jamie talking about the grant funds, but we fund tons of other projects that are just like this, that are all almost all free or almost free that you can find on that website. And also our blog and newsletter is filled with information, which is the sites.ed.gov slash IDEA. So um, definitely looking forward to continuing these series with Office of Education Technology Office and um, working on sharing these great projects and tech tools. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.